Soichiro Honda is well known as a successful entrepreneur who founded the well-known automaker Honda. The question is, how did he come to achieve such amazing success? The majority of us have been struck by this question, but only a few are familiar with it. So let's go back in time and learn about the heroic success story of this legend. Let's get started. We're going to jump right in, into Honda Motor Company's world. We are not riding a Honda SUV to get there, we are riding a 50cc A-type bicycle. The Honda journey began with this bicycle. Soichiro Honda, who started out on this bicycle, later fell into the automobile industry. Here we explore Honda's past, from motorcycles to their goals for 2025. Soichiro Honda a Japanese industrialist and engineer who founded Honda Motor Company Limited. He spent his early years helping his blacksmith father run his bicycle repair shop. Honda, who had no formal schooling, left home at the age of 15 and moved to Tokyo in search of employment. In 1922, he obtained an apprenticeship at a garage. The owner gave him the responsibility of caring for his son and cleaning the workshop. Nobody cared about him at the moment but that was only because they didn't know who this young man would grow up to be. This is the story of how one impoverished Japanese man went from babysitting kids to creating a multi-billion dollar company with Honda Motors. He stayed for six years, working as a mechanic before going back to his hometown in 1928, at the age of 22, to launch his own vehicle repair shop. Honda started making piston rings for tiny engines in 1937, which led to the production of small engines for bikes. In order to get Japanese laborers mobile, Honda Motor Company Limited, with its headquarters in Minato, Tokyo, Japan, was founded in October 1946. When he was president of the Honda Motor Company, he began manufacturing full-sized motorcycles. Due to their better engineering and savvy marketing, Honda motorcycles outsold Triumph and Harley-Davidson in each of their domestic markets. He trusted Takeo Fujisawa, one of his closest friends, to operate the business, and he urged him to think long-term. They were a perfect match for each other. The first product of their collaboration, a 98cc two-stroke motorcycle, suitably titled Dream, hit the streets. Honda Motor Company came dangerously close to crashing into the rocks several times in the years that followed, because both Honda and Fujisawa were gamblers who understood that growth could only be achieved by taking risks. At one point, their growth was extraordinary, but it came dangerously close to bankruptcy when they bought cutting-edge gear in the early 1950s. Fujisawa said that without Honda, we would have never gotten this huge, while Honda claimed that without Fujisawa, we would have gone bankrupt a long time ago. Honda claimed that he never touched or observed the company seal. He and Fujisawa agreed to never pressure their own sons to work for the business. Hirotoshi Honda, his son, founded Mugen Motorsports and previously served as a CEO. Mugen Motorsports was a Honda auto tuner that also produced distinctive racing vehicles. He could show that products from Japan are popular and competitive with those from Western countries. At the time, there weren't many female drivers. Instead, they could be seen in the backseat. Many men were terrified to drive as well. They wanted a product that could appeal to women and those who would not normally ride a bicycle. The Super Cub bike needs to be simple enough to use with just one hand in order to appear to more men than the traditional motorcycle consumer base. Within just two years of its release, the Super Cub made Honda the largest motorcycle manufacturer in Japan. Surprisingly, Honda, riding high on the popularity of the Super Cub, decided it was time to look abroad and establish the American Honda Company in 1959. Over 100 million Super Cubs have now been produced, making it the most produced automobile in history. For those who had previously believed motorcycles to be dangerous, a brand new one was going to be made. Thanks in part to famous people like James Dean and Elvis, the huge masculine image in US underwent a full reversal. Because of this, Honda decided to sell their bikes in places other than traditional bike merchants, such as sporting goods stores, hobby shops, and even hardware stores. Soichiro has never been hesitant to gamble heavily on the future, and he will never cease daring to have bigger dreams. The time has come to begin working towards the fulfillment of another desire. 
For many, attempting to win Formula 1 was an unattainable task, but he had already made up his mind. Nothing could stop him from succeeding. He just needed to put down the required time. At the 1964 Belgian Grand Prix, RA271 made its Formula 1 debut. With their new successor, the RA272, Honda won the 1965 Mexican Grand Prix in first place after just one year. Soichiro was a legendary race car driver in addition to being a superb mechanic. This was yet another skill that made him stand out from his peers in the shop. In the Hanamatsu race car that Soichiro had built, he was able to break the previous speed record in Japan by going up to 120 km per hour. This record remained for 20 years. However, racing back then was far riskier than it is now. Soichiro Honda kept taking pleasure in racing. In the 1936 Japanese high-speed rally, Honda suffered a serious injury that required him to permanently give up racing. Honda wasn't even close to outperforming its rivals in the vehicle industry despite its early success on the racetrack, so they took a break from racing and focused on creating the Honda Civic, one of the most popular vehicles on the market. In order to succeed, one must endure many failures. Soichiro's trip wasn't simple. He overcame many obstacles, yet he never gave up on trying something new. He promoted employees based more on their performance and expertise in the industry rather than on their age. In fact, when he said he wouldn't leave the company to his children, the entire media was stunned. Honda faced difficulties throughout the 1990s. They were falling behind their competitors and were unprepared for the decade's truck and SUV boom. Japanese media outlets said that Honda was in danger of a hostile takeover by Mitsubishi Motors. They were the largest automakers in terms of volume at the time due to the popularity of their Pajero and Diamante. Honda needed to take swift action to stop this from happening. Honda needed to take swift action to stop this from happening. Their company culture was altered, which made it possible for speedy, market-driven product creation. The Odyssey and CRV of the first generation were the outcomes. Thankfully, these automobiles prevented the acquisition of Honda. After the 1992 season, they left Formula One as well. All of these incidents served as a wake-up call for Honda, who had adopted a somewhat playboy daredevil lifestyle because of a sudden infusion of cash. However, a number of close encounters has caused him to reconsider what it was that he truly desired. Soichiro's company was put under the direct command and control of the Ministry of Armaments after Japan entered the Pacific War in 1941. The company's equity was transferred to Toyota the next year, and Soichiro was demoted from president to senior managing director. As more male workers started to leave their jobs because they were called up for the military, the situation only got worse and his business started to struggle. Soichiro did everything in his power to keep his business afloat, but he wasn't prepared for what 1944 would bring Japan. Japan's air raid sirens started to sound more frequently, and it was soon crystal clear that the nation was doomed to defeat. Hamamatsu was in grave danger, and Soichiro's company plant was destroyed in a direct bomb blast. The business would later have a second setback in January 1945, when the Iwanta plant failed and the region was shaken by the Nankai earthquake. Japan finally gave up in August 1945, but by that point, Soichiro had nearly lost everything. Following the war, Soichiro made the decision to sell what remained of his business to Toyota for 450,000 yen. Certainly, Soichiro Honda's success story is filled with hardships and, and obstacles, but this is what life is all about. Soichiro left the company and passed away on August 5, 1991. Wrapping up, how will transportation appear in 2088? As they endeavor to develop tomorrow's smarter mobile environment, Honda employees are actively pondering the solutions to this challenge. Honda develops new products that enhance human life while safeguarding and maintaining our environment as part of its mission to guarantee blue skies for our children. The corporation wants to reduce CO2 emissions from its goods and business operations by 50% by 2050. It unquestionably contributes to climate change on a global scale. The company's prosperity or their expensive cars won't be on my mind when I finish this video. I actually only have one query. Was there anything he hadn't dealt with in his life? He had witnessed everything that life had to offer, from tragic accidents to battle. 
If you find it difficult to tackle a task, take a seat and journey through Honda's life. You'll feel energized. I feel like this. How do you feel? Ready to take on the challenges life has in store for you? Please share your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.